Good morning, friends. For all of those who are not currently in this room because of donuts, I understand. For all of you who have joined us, thank you so much for being here. Anyone who is joining us via the live stream, thank you for being here. We're so excited about this first of hopefully many We Sing events. The series goal is for all of us to remind ourselves that if you have a voice, you have a song. We all can sing, and we all can sing for the betterment of each other. So that's why we're here today. This first We Sing event uh, is titled We Sing Spirituals. We'll be celebrating the various spirituals that are in our new hymnal, Glory to God hymnal, uh, that we have here at Colonial Meeting House Church. And we're very excited to have a full sound from all of you because we will be singing as loud and boisterously and meaningfully as possible. And today, leading us in We Sing Spirituals is Dr. M Emery Stevens, who is from St. Olaf and a beautiful baritone. You will hear it at some point today. So, Dr. Emery Stevens. Thank you so much, Paul, and the Colonial Church uh, family, and those who are joining us uh, uh, through live stream as well as those in the community who may be uh, joining us this morning. I feel like it's still af it's afternoon, but it's morning. And so good morning to you, and uh, thank you for being here, and thank you for allowing um, and inviting me, uh, allowing me to uh, present uh, this morning. I just want to start a little bit of introduction. Um, all of us probably have been touched, moved, by spirituals in our, our, our past, our present, and um, the first time hearing a spiritual, that excitement, but also that sort of powerful, uh, powerful music and words coming together, and then the history behind. So I just want to kind of center uh, some of our thoughts as we go into this really American music um, it was born during slavery, as you know. Um, and they are very much a very important part of American music, uh, despite the sort of uh, horrific past of which these, these songs were born. So they have roots in the African-American uh, experience, um, and they are open to uh, singing from all racial backgrounds, because there's, I call it, I call it the human condition, right? All of us have felt uh, oppressed, maybe, in some space, uh, or finding hope, or sort of centering our faith as we're going through a trial. So these are universal songs and themes that help everyone to move forward wherever they are. The emergence of the spirituals is rooted in the encounter between African traditional life and the evangelical Protestant Christianity way back when in sort of the South. So most of the spiritual hymns, which we're going to sing today, um, are sort of provide us context and give us a little bit of um, insight in what it must have been like to be enslaved and how these words, and we don't even know all the authors of these, of these words, these texts, but how they penned their experience and how they were able to move from trial, tribulation, bondage, to freedom. So this morning I would like to sort of also uh, give you a little bit of uh, context too. The Library of Congress has over 6,000 of these melodies uh, targeted, uh, uh, labeled spirituals. And um, they were also known as plantation melodies, religious folk songs. They were passed down through the oral tradition originally. So um, they were not written down until basically 1860s. 
1867, there was a wonderful publication that came out um, by William Francis Allen, a published uh, document called Slave Songs of the United States. And he went around and actually documented, wrote these down. So that we have these now that are in your hymnal. And I was so glad to look at your hymnal because I saw that each of the spirituals, they give you a little bit of history on the bottom of the page. So if you can, every time you sing a spiritual, every time you sing one of the hymns, look to the bottom of the page so you can actually see and really sort of center, center your thoughts as you're singing to the context. So we know that there's a blending of Western, sort of West African and Western music that happen as well as for enslaved Africans learning about the American culture, but also bringing with them their own, um, their own religion, their own sort of practices. Music was very central. Think about spirituals being the lifeline. They were songs of survival. They were songs of testimony. There are different types of spirituals. We have call and response. We have a leader and sort of a, a response from a choir or sort of, uh, or sort of anyone in the room, basically. Um, and some of those tunes are Swing Low, Sweet Charity, Go Down Moses. We're going to sing some of those today. The slow and sustained ones are really often uh, called sorrow songs or really passionate uh, songs that were sort of expressing uh, deep, emotional, and heartfelt feelings. And then we always have the rhythmic up-tempo, we call those jubilees, and those are really uh, about sort of lifting up uh, the spirit, lifting up the energy in the room. Um, this is sort of like what I envision, even as you're seated today, is if we were all in a circle, this would be sort of what the original sort of, uh, I would say not even performances because they were, the actual sort of singing would be done in the circle. And the circle was a very um, moving thing because everyone was a part of it. So I would not be up here on stage, I would be a p among the circle, right? There would not be a sort of here stage and an audience. We would all be a part of that sort of eternal sort of space. So I would like to start with four different quotes um, before we start our formal sing. So the first one is understanding. And I, uh, we all know fr the life of Frederick Douglass and I thought this was a wonderful quote for us to really understand the, the meaning behind, why do we still have spirituals? Because they were su such a horrific time period which they were born, but they still exist today. So, understanding, I have sometimes thought that the mere hearing of spirituals would do more to impress some minds with the horrible character of slavery than the reading of whole volumes of philosophy on the subject could do. So singing these, we get a chance to experience history by doing it, right? By singing those words, right? The next slide. So acknowledging our complicated history. We have a complica complicated history. However, there has been a lot of healing that's been done. We still have some place to go in that. Um, but W.E.B. Du Bois in bo Book of the Sour Songs in the Soul Souls of Black Folk wrote, actively we have woven ourselves with the very warp of woof of this nation. We fought their battles, shared their sorrow, mingled our blood with theirs, and generation after generation have pleaded with a headstrong, careless people to despise not justice, mercy, and truth, lest the nation be smitten with a curse. Our song, our song, our toil, our cheer, and warning have been given to this nation in blood, brotherhood. Are not these gifts worth the giving? 
is not this work and striving. Would America have been America without her Negro people? The next slide, two more here. So historical context. So I, I do a, um, I'm working on a project called Singing Down the Barriers and is working with sort of um, opening up the canon. So we have piano vocal scores of spirituals and some students uh, feel a little bit reluctant to, to approach the spirituals because they feel like they can't because they're not black. And the project is all about sort of centering the universality of the experience of, of the spirituals, but also learning through the songs. And so uh, James Weldon Johnson, very famous uh, for the Lift Every Voice and Sing, wrote, I think white singers, concert singers, can sing spirituals if they feel them. But to feel them, it is necessary to know the truth about their origin and history, to get in touch with the association of ideas that surround them, and to realize something of what they have meant in the experiences of the people who created them. And then our last slide to center us. Restore justice, here we are. Even today, we're moving toward a better relationship of all the identities that are in America. So through all the sorrow of the sorrow songs, there breathes a hope of faith in the ultimate justice of things. The minor cadences of despair change often to triumph and calm confidence. Something is faith in life, sometimes a faith in death, sometimes assurance of boundless justice in some fair world beyond. But whichever it is, the meaning is always clear that sometime, somewhere, I'll say everyone, will judge men by their souls and not by their skins. So that's going to center our time together this morning. Um, I'm going to invite the choir to, and Paul to come and give us our first choral selection entitled Deep River.
Thank you, Colonial Corral, Deep River. My home is over Jordan. That's a coded language. We have coded languages and spirituals about crossing over into freedom, but we couch it in sort of a biblical sense. So the spirituals did have a lot of coded languages for uh, runaway slaves and also for communicating among themselves. And so uh, very clever people to put into music a way of communicating with each other. So we're going to stand, or not, well, we're going to have to stand, do we? For these? Yes, we're going to stand and go tell it on a mountain. 136. And we're singing all the verses. What I would encourage you to do is the first verse is to sing it unison. And then we have the choirs. And anyone else want to add some melody, some harmonies to the melodies? <laughs> um, please feel free to do that. So here we go. Excellent, you may be seated. So this next selection is, he is king of kings, um, 273. And how we're gonna sort of move into this is I will sing, get my little notes here, they're all over the place. <laughs> um, I will sing verse one and two. And then I'm going to invite you to join me on the chorus and sing the third verse and final chorus. Um, this is familiar to you, I hear, from Kathy, for the choir. And you, you sing this. No? No? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so we'll do this first. Um, I'll sing the the chorus part again and you'll join me I'll bring you in
inclusive here. <laughs> All right, so now those were our, they call them the songs of faith, foundation, keeping us rooted, right? Keeping us sort of connected, really moving into our personal relationship with the Creator. And that's really important. That's what sustained uh, enslaved Africans during that time period is their faith, is their deep-rootedness in faith. And so thank you for allowing me again to sort of come and to sort of bring all these, all these uh, sort of hymns, these hymn arrangements. This is a great hymnal um, because it does give you a lot of spirituals. Usually sometimes you have like two or three. But it's this, like how many, like 20, yeah. like 25? So enjoy them all. <laughs> all right, now we're going to move into what I call the Songs of Freedom. So enslaved Africans believed that freedom came with a price, especially runaway slaves who feared being caught. Coded spirituals were messages of escape or resilience found in spirituals to foster communication between each other on the plantation. Um, that was the way they sort of went to communicate with others through song. So the next few spirituals center on the importance of freedom. And we see the first one we're gonna sing when Israel was in Egypt's land, also known as Go Down Moses. It's one of the best known of the spirituals and was one of the first to be written down. Um, enslaved Africans uh, identified themselves with those other groups, the Israelites, who were also in bondage. And they sort of, they really capitalized on those old biblical stories because they understood them for themselves. So we're going to sing uh, verses 1 three and four and again on the first verse we can just do that in unison and then we can go go to town on verses three and four so it's hymnal 52 and do you you can stand or do we we say 60 yeah we'll, we'll stand on that last one because we have the Swinging this a little bit too. When
Beautiful. Amen. Amen. And that, that, that biblical story, we always, we always remember that biblical story, don't we? From Sunday school, right? <laughs> About Moses, yes. Um, so that is a great, and it's interesting, they usually it's go down Moses, but they uh, pinned the spiritual when Israel was in Egypt's land. So I think that's even more telling. We know uh, Moses was the sort of the, the person who did the work. But it does give us a context in when Israel was in Egypt's land. All right, now the next spiritual we're going to do is steal away. And we're going to sing the last refrain a cappella. This is on 358. We're going to do verses 1 and 3. And this is, again, this is one of those uh, spirituals that was centering but also informative to those who were looking for the Underground Railroad. Um, this was a familiar uh, song that was done. So again, add your harmonies um, for the chorus, maybe, and we'll do an a cappella ending. Okay, so verses one and three. I don't think this is new. Okay, it's new for, okay, 770. I'm gonna eat at the welcome table. And this was definitely one of those spirituals that was all about equality, of being able to sit down and have a meal. Because generally the African, um, enslaved African, were 
uh, fed just enough to keep them physically able to do what they're supposed to do. And they were not able to sort of eat like the rest of folks around the table. Uh, so this is really about sort of a, a quality way back when. So we're going to uh, sing verses 1, 3, and 4, 770. familiar one. We've probably sung this um, during our camp meetings or uh, remember the, our Sunday school camps. So Kumbaya 472 and this is one we can just just sing it all out. <laughs> um, kind of the Gullah language of Kumbaya come by here inviting presence of God to dwell among us. So kumbaya, my Lord, and we're singing all verses. singing so 
someone singing. First, um, My Lord, What a Morning. The title is sort of ambiguous, but in some versions, the word is morning, M-O-U-R-N-I-N-G. In others, it's morning, like morning. Uh, Judith Fleischer, a scholar who has written about slave narratives, says, slave lives were filled with mornings, M-O-U-R-N-I-N-G-S, after M.O. mornings, and denied direct expression of this grief, they, like other people, would find it in other ways. When the text is read with the word morning, like good morning, however, the song is an extraordinarily uh, part of affirmation of hope. So we want to think about the morning, right? We want to think about the darkness and night but thinking about the morning, the joy that comes in the morning. So let us sing, My Lord, What a Morning. And we're singing all verses here. What I want to try here, let's do some, some real camp meeting singing. So we're going to do the chorus once, right? Yeah. So can we do this? Can we have... Uh, this side of the room, <laughs> sing the first verse. You will hear the trumpet sound. And then this side of the room, notice I didn't say left or right. <laughs> this side of the room, verse two. And then everybody, everybody, the communal body, sing verse three. Okay? Verse one, verse two, verse three. Everyone sings the, the chorus though. Here we go.
That's one of my favorites. And there's lots of choral arrangements actually as well. So a lot of the spirituals again, um, we have piano vocal scores for soloists. A lot of people have gone to recitals and classical concerts where a soloist will bring out a whole selection of piano vocal uh, selections and spirituals arrangements. And then, of course, lots of choral arrangements uh, for all the way from K to 12, to churches, to community choirs, to colleges. And then we also have these hymn arrangements. So we have many places in which to sort of center these spirituals. So the next one is Swing Low. This is actually familiar. So this is, again, I want to add a couple of familiar pieces and then some that were less familiar. So this is 825. What we'll do here is, We're going to do the call and response on this one, I think, right? Did we say? For the chorus as well? Okay. <laughs> and then uh, we'll sing all of, what verses? I'm sorry. One, two, four. Thank you. <laughs> I, need a, I need a check there. All right, so I'll sing Sweet Little Sweet Chariot. I'm the leader. Call. And you sing.
No, 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 you know it. Oh, oh, awesome. Yes, all right. But it's a little different. It's weird. Okay, so. <laughs> they changed a couple of things. They adapted the, the spiritual a little bit. So we'll just read it as much as we could. And we're doing verses one, two, and four. And really, I'll lean in to keep your whole lungs. Just get that to the so do this for me, so. Yeah. and how perfect that these are here because we're about to move into that the week of Lent, the week uh, preceding to Easter. Um, so crucifixion of Christ and the enslaved people, Africans, resonated with this pain and pain of suffering. And they saw the ascension of Christ 
as a beautiful thing for them to realize that they could also ascend out of slavery. And so they really resonated with the, the personage of Jesus the Christ here. So we're going to sing, They Crucified My Lord. We're going to do all the verses here. This is hymn number 219. And as we, as we sing this, this is such a graphic. I want you to sort of, even if you, you know this already, but to sort of just feel every verse from they crucified my Lord to seeing the nails, seeing the piercing, this is very descriptive. And so I want you to sort of just sit with this suffering that Christ did on the cross. And it takes you through the whole story, the whole sort of graphic story. Oh, yeah. But we're grateful that he did die because we have eternal. Yes, life. <laughs> so I want Jesus to walk with me. So this is another personal, these are personal um, 
accounts of the spirituals um, that really go to the go to your gut. So seven seven five. And I think we're going to do one of the last one. We're going to do an acapella. So the when I'm in trouble. Thank you for adding those harmonies, because these were communal songs. Again, they were not sort of just for performance, only they were about really survival. So everyone was about sort of giving, giving energy. Even if they weren't singers, they would beat out the rhythms, right? They would join, they would sway, they would get into the music. So now we're going to go to one of the, my favorites. I remember when I was baptized. This was one of our um, hymns that we sang a lot. Take me to the, to the water. It's a 480. Sorry. Yes. I just say it. I don't know. Oh, okay. Awesome. Okay. It's a great one. So you'll, you'll probably add this to your, yes, selections.
Pastor Jeff Lindsay, and thank you so much for your wonderful welcome uh, for our prayer and dedication of the hymnal. I don't know if this is appropriate or not, but I think we should give Dr. Stevens a big round of applause. <laughs> I think I'm going to need a little bit of a neck brace because when you started singing that first song, my head, I was looking down at it, my head jerked up like, this isn't that voice. Just beautiful, just beautiful. We are so blessed, really, so blessed. Uh, I also think, you know, we, we, we obviously have this, we think we're dedicating a new hymnal and, you know, we're going to try to raise some money for that as well. But I think... I think if we would have auctioned off the opportunity to sit where I'm sitting in front of the Rudois, <laughs> we would have paid for the whole thing. Oh my goodness. I just have to stop singing and listen. Then I'm like, no, because Paul be mad at me. So I start singing again. <laughs> so, I mean, just amazing, the two of them singing together and, and listening to all of your voices. This is just, this is just amazing. God is, I know, honored and blessed. I had the opportunity to say a prayer over this new hymnal right here. And for us to think about us dedicating these next how many years of this new hymnal, to listen to God's word and to be guided by the, the tunes and the words that inform our faith and inform our journey together. So let me pray. God, we are grateful for this blessed time. We know that all of heaven is leaning low from their heavenly realm to hear these beautiful spirituals, these words of faith and hope beyond hope for a people that needed to understand that you were close, that you had not abandoned them. And we need that same message today. And so thank you for just a glimpse of all of the wonderful work that's within the bindings of this hymnal. So Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God of glory, your your church on earth joins with the choirs of heaven in giving you thanks and praise. As we will gather in worship, we will be filled with wonder and awe. So may the songs of our lips echo the music that swells in our hearts. God, bless us with your presence as we use these hymnals. And grant that we may glorify and praise you in all that we sing. Oh God in heaven, we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. And all God's people said, Amen. 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 Pastor Lindsay, uh, we are now going to take it home. Every time I feel the spirit, I want you to release your spirit, all of your energy, everything in your body. We're going to stand. And we're going to raise the roof here at Colonial Church and affirm our salvation every time I feel the Spirit. All verses, pour it all out. Come on, Spirit.
morning yourselves to this afternoon. Afternoon. You started in the morning, but afternoon. Thank you so much for the invitation, and I'm going to turn it back over to Paul. Thank you so much. One more round of applause. Thank you. This is the first of many. Bring friends. I'm assuming you enjoyed yourselves. I'm assuming you found your voice. I'm assuming you can think of five friends who don't believe they can sing but actually have a voice because they've spoken to you in the past 50 years. You can bring them here and we can sing together. We can change the world through song. What we learned here today, we can bring out, take out with us, okay? If you are interested in dedicating one or 500 hymnals, you can head out there. We have members of the corral who are out there to take your name and your phone number and your uh, email address, and we will contact you about next steps for purchasing uh, a dedication which will help support this series and those hymnals. It's $25 a piece. It would mean a lot. I'm personally going to do it for my grandma who passed out 101 two years ago. She's going to have a name in here. So thank you so much for coming. We really appreciate you. Have a good day.